In this video, we're going to do a quick proof with dimensions and subspaces. So let H be a non-zero subspace of V. We suppose some linear mapping from V to W, and we want to prove that the dimension of the transformation on H is equal to the dimension of H. So we want to start out with a basis for H. So let's start out with that. Let's take, for instance, B1 all the way up through BP, and we'll call this basis B, and it's going to be a basis for H. So what do we know about the dimension of H right now? Well, we know that the dimension of H is going to be equal to P, because if there's P vectors in the basis, then the dimension is going to be P. So now we need to show that the dimension on the transformation of H is also going to be equal to P. So we should start by putting the transformation on all the vectors here. So we're going to get a set that contains T of B1 all the way up through T of BP. Now I believe in one of the previous videos I've shown that this is going to span T of H or the transformation on H. So this we know spans T of H. Okay, so what's the other requirement for this set here to be a basis? Well, it has to span all of TH and it has to be linearly independent. Well, we also showed that any one-to-one -one function, if we have a linear independence from B1 through BP, we're going to get a linear independence from TB1 all the way up to TBP. So this is also linearly independent. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, it spans TH and it's linearly independent by the definition and the proof that we've done earlier. Therefore, this TB1 all the way up through TBP is going to be a basis for T of H, which means that the basis for T of H has P vectors, therefore the dimension of T of H is P. So, if we start with a dimension for H equal to P, then we're going to get the dimension T of H equal to P as well. So the dimensions are the same. Okay, so that was the proof. I know it seems kind of like straightforward because we didn't actually do any calculations and we just took theorems from previous videos and previous exercises, but sometimes it's just what happens. Sometimes the easiest way to get a result is to take a look at the things you've already done and just use their properties step by step to show, hey, this is how you satisfy the properties and it's a very quick proof. So you need to put those in the videos too because sometimes these appear on exams and you really don't have to prove everything step by step because you've already proven them before or you've taken them for uh, granted because you've done them in the homework or something. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.